play some Jimmy Dore videos of Josh Fox. Who is this Josh Fox? Well, apparently three years ago, it's saying uh, Josh Fox is saying you must call for the firing of Rachel Maddow. He is saying that we need third party. So let's hear Josh Fox and Jimmy Dore getting along. I've always said that Trump is not the problem, he's a symptom. Of course he's a problem, but he is a symptom of the problem. He didn't just come out of nowhere. We didn't get to a country where half the people who live in the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen, and half of them are poor or in poverty. That's, that didn't just happen overnight. We have a messed up system, you know. So that's why you mm -hmm. don't get to go on MSNBC anymore, because you're, uh, you're critiquing the system, <laughs> right? You're critiquing the system. I know, I, they haven't called. Could you look, can you oh, look me, no, I just want to ask you, can you look me in the eyes right now, honestly, and say you can? You thought MSNBC would be such a garbage dumpster fire as it has turned into? No, in fact, I really, you know, look for for six, seven years, eight years, starting with Gasland in twenty in twenty ten. So you know, seven years. I was a regular on MSNBC. We would talk about fracking. We would talk about climate change. We would talk about the oil spills. You know, whether that was Melissa Harris Perry's show or Chris Hayes' show or. Um, you know, Morning Joe or, or, or whatever, uh, they uh, uh, covered the news every once in a while. And they had experts on who knew about fossil fuels, namely myself and Bill McKibben and other people. Now, once Bernie, uh, Bernie's candidacy came out and they clearly made a decision, um, that this is during the election, right, um, that they weren't going to have us on uh, anymore. They would have Bernie on, but they wouldn't have the surrogates. And you can look at the numbers of Bernie versus Hillary. I mean, the most egregious offender on the night of June the 6th, and you know what night I'm talking about. I call this the California coup. The night of the, the last Democratic primary was on June 7th. Uh, MSNBC decided to <laughs> call the election um, for Hillary Clinton the night before the election. You know, like, what, what is this, El Salvador? Like, where are we in the 1980s? Like, what is happening here? Like, oh, yes, we know that you're supposed to go to the polls tomorrow, but we just thought we'd let you know the results the night before. That's easier. You know, tell me what happened. You don't have to bother. You know, and I remember being in California with Bernie. We did four rallies in three days, like L.A., San Diego, wherever. I mean, it was like, and my, I just, I, I was outside of KPFK in Los Angeles, and I had just done like three different radio shows, Greg Pass and something else, and then I get this text, MSNBC calls the race for Hillary Clinton, and I walked right back into KPFK and said, I don't care what show you have on, you're putting me back on the air, because this is bullshit. Like, and they did. It was kind of awesome. They're yeah. a great radio station. But, um, you the know, show, I remember that who, who ran with that story? AP. It was one AP story. It's easy to plant. One AP story based on anonymous sources. Who ran with it that made it go? Rachel Maddow, MSNBC. They said, now, and now the reason why I think MSNBC doesn't want me back on is because the day after the election, Trump wins. They start to pivot to burn. But, um, but what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that... Uh, what are you trying to say, Josh Fox? I, ro I wrote a tweet that said, no, no, no. You can't pivot like that. You can't make it... No, 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 Don't you be tweeting like that. Don't you dare tweet like that. Here's another seemingly friendly I interview. I always said that Trump is not the problem. He's a symptom. Of course he's a problem, but he is a symptom mm. of the problem. He didn't just come out of nowhere. We didn't get to a country where half the people who live in the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen and half of them are poor or in poverty. That's, that didn't just happen overnight. We have a messed up system, you know? So that's why you mm -hmm. don't get to go on MSNBC anymore because you're, uh, you're critiquing the system, <laughs> right? You're critiquing so that's the exact same interview. Okay, so, all right, we only have one good interview. Um, well, maybe here's, okay, we'll try this one. Hi, everybody. We're up. You can see who our guest is, Josh Fox. He's the award-winning director of Gasland, Gasland 2, and How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change. Uh, we gotta, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, his new movie, uh, we're going to talk about the draft Bernie party. We're going to talk about Standing Rock. Let me welcome my guest, Josh Fox. Hi, Josh. Thanks for being with us. Okay, I'm good. I'm in the great city of New Orleans, uh, down here to look at some things uh, related to the Bayou Bridge Pipeline, a, a pipeline that connects to the Dakota Access Pipeline that people are getting geared up to fight right now down here in Louisiana. Now, Josh, why are all these pipeline fights happening? It seems like they're happening all of a sudden. Someone told me it was because the President of the United States, Barack Obama, used to be against the law to export fossil fuels, and he re did he 
take away that restriction, or did I hear incorrectly? Oh, it's so much worse than that, Jimmy. So you're right. It has to do with Barack Obama. Um, in the infinite wisdom of the neoliberals, uh, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and the like, they decided that the best thing for us to do for climate change policy was to phase out all the old coal-fired power plants. Now, that was a good thing. Coal-fired power plants suck. They're an incredible amount of carbon dioxide. They could poison communities. Coal is an awful, awful fuel. No one should advocate for coal. However, instead of changing those coal-fired power plants to existing renewable energy technology, like solar, like wind, which would be great for the planet and great for communities and great for our economy and for jobs, they decided, um, or rather, they let the natural gas industry infiltrate, the fracked gas industry infiltrate, into uh, the White House. And they convinced them to substitute, um, and this is truly unbelievable, fracked gas for coal. So when you build a fracked gas power plant or you convert a coal-fired power plant to fracked gas, you need to do a, a lot of nest. Okay, very interesting stuff, but uh, seems to have gone uh, downhill, right? Three months ago, two months ago, something about the most fucked up thing I ever witnessed on MSNBC, fracked integrity, Biden's supporter, self-owned censorship, from billionaire-backed professional activists. Let's talk about the cell phone first, and then we'll talk about the censorship. So, this is one of my favorite things, is to catch people self-owning. So, in 2016, uh, in Philadelphia, I met this guy, Josh Fox. He, he did that movie, Gasland, right? It's about fracking. So, yes. he's super big about fracking. And, uh, you know, I could tell pretty quickly that he was a bit of a grifter. Josh Fox, and that he, he was more about his career and his self-promotion than he really was about anything else. And so he's doing it again. Uh, he, he's such a Democratic hack, because his, his career path goes through the Democratic Party, and that's why he does this, right? And it's, it's so obvious. I don't know, he, who, he's not fooling anyone. He's just playing ball so that the Neera Candons and the Debbie Wasserman Schultzes like him. Uh, Republicans are helping Greens stay on the ballot in swing states. This should tell you all you need to know about both. both. So, Josh Fox does this every four years. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's like a voter-shaming volcano. <laughs> every four years, he, he goes off. By the way, he has a new show. I shall, I'll help promote it for him. It's called uh, Staying Home with Josh Fox. Why would anybody name a show something that sounds like a punishment? <laughs> uh, every so often, the guy who made films exposing the evils of fracking shames you for not voting for candidates who vow to protect fracking. The system's working great, folks. <laughs> so this is the guy telling you to vote for Joe Biden, Joe Biden, the guy who promises to keep fracking going. His number one issue, do you see how when you're a careerist inside the Democratic Party and you pretend you're an activist, do you see the pretzel twist you got to tie yourself in? Do you see the knots he's tied in? It means the GOP are using the Greens against the majority. It means the Green Party is so craven that it is willing to collaborate with racist fascists. <laughs> Learn these things and act accordingly. Unlike Joe Biden, who is not a racist or a fascist. <laughs> Joe Biden, who passed the crime bill, who said we do everything except hang jaywalkers. Joe Biden's treatment of Anita Hill was fantastic. Joe Biden, who voted for Anthony and Scalia. Joe Biden, who was part of the administration, who did Libya, who did Syria, dropped more bombs than George Bush. That's the racist fascist. <laughs> this is called projection, Josh. <laughs> I know you don't know that. Josh Fox pushes false information propagated by the Washington Post. This should tell you everything you need to know about both. <laughs> it's good writing. Is, if the Green Actually, you write like that if you don't read. Collaborating with the GOP to give voters more choices, then what are the Democrats for collaborating with big oil, big banks, and big pharma to give us fewer choices? Courageous? 
Do you see the cat? Cock- <laughs> During the grip season, you eat like no one's watching. But if they are watching, they're probably jealous. Don't miss the most anticipated sandwich. The McGriff is back. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Remember this one, the Fract Integrity? To the moment I met that guy, I was pretty sure he was using the Democratic Party as a career ladder. And uh, that's why he punches left and smears greens. And I did that video, and we outed him. But the guy who really outed him is on the show today, and I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, Max Blumenthal over at the Gray Zone did this great article, so we're going to uh, talk about it right now. Um, it was titled, The Green Billionaires Behind Professional Activist Network That Led Suppression of Planet of the Humans documentary. You know that Michael Moore produced uh, that documentary that talked about how, hey, we've been doing Earth Days for 50 years. Why, why is the Earth wor- worse off? And uh, it, it's basically because uh, uh, big oil and gas and Wall Street money has found a way to compromise the activists. Uh, and here's, the, so let's look at, upon the film's release, a who's who of self-styled climate justice activists proceeded to blanket the internet with accusations that Planet of the Humans was a racist, eco-fascist screed that deliberately advanced the interests of the oil and gas industry. The ringleader of the push to suppress Planet of the Humans was Josh Fox, the Oscar-nominated director of the film Gasland, which highlighted the destructive practices inherent in fracking. Josh Fox launched a campaign by calling for the documentary to be retracted by its producers. Josh Fox fired off a breathless email to a group of public relations professionals. A number of reputable websites are hosting this abomination, and I need your support in getting them to take it down, Josh Fox wrote. On April 24th, Josh Fox claimed he had successfully pressured an online video library, Films for Action, into removing Planet of the Humans from its website. His victory lap turned out to be premature as Films for Action reposted the film and publicly condemned Fox's campaign to drive it into oblivion. The relentless push by Fox and others eventually triggered a statement by PEN America, the free speech advocacy group, saying calls to pull a film because of disagreements with its content are calls for censorship, plain and simple. And that's what... Sam Cedar and Emma Vigilant said that uh, Jimmy Dore doesn't read, and here he's uh, reading. What Josh Fox was doing. Uh, Here's Films for Action. They tweeted this out. Planet of the Humans is worthy of good critique, but we don't support the campaign to have the film removed from YouTube, and we definitely don't support abusing copyright law in a clear case of fair use to accomplish that goal. So to, get, to try to censor the news that they didn't want, Josh Fox didn't want out there, what they did was they used a bogus copyright claim, which we're very familiar with here at the Jimmy Dore Show, when somebody wants to take you down, they launch a bogus copyright claim, YouTube immediately sides with that copyright claimant until things get cleared up, and that's exactly what they did. So that was a bogus way to censor. So that's that authoritarianism, that censorship for the left. But why would Josh Fox be so quick to want to censor somebody? Why? What was he afraid of? What was he? What is Mr. Fract Integrity afraid of? Well, Josh Fox ties to the Professional Activist Network extend to the funding network centered around the Environmental Grant Makers Association. Between 2012 and 2017, Josh Fox's film company reported grants totaling 2.5 million dollars. Much of that funding came courtesy of the Rockefeller. Brothers Cultural Innovation Fund and the Rockefeller MAP Fund, as well as the Ford and Park Foundations. Oh boy, I think we know why Josh Fox wanted to censor that movie. Why he's pro censorship and a transparent grifter because he's getting his money from these people. There it is, millions of dollars. That's who he's getting his money from. We know you, that matters, who you get your money from. We know that matters. These climate justice activists were bound together by support from the same family foundations, billionaire investors, and industry interests that were skewered in the film. So now you know why Josh Fox was so vocal in throwing every 
bullshit thing he could to try to stop this film because it's his gravy train that they were threatening, and he's paid by the people. The film was skewering. Renewable energy kingpin Elon Musk practically takes credit for the Bolivian lithium coup just months after planning a meeting with Bolsonaro ahead of the Tesla factory in lithium-rich Brazil. Ooh. There's Elon Musk bragging about the coup. Also, uh, the money man for John Fox's one-man show, which was, by the way, re uh, they fired him... <laughs> from the theater in New York where he was doing that because he's such a horrible person. And, then, and, and his money man was Elon Musk's money man. But let's bring on Max Blumenthal to sort all this out, the guy who wrote this article, and we, uh, uh, we'll put a link to it. It's unbelievable. The, he left no stone, stone unturned in this investigation. Uh, Max Blumenthal is here from the Gray Zone. Hey, Max, how are you? Good to see you. Um, Jealous that I can't grow a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not trying. You can't do it. You're just but uh, some advice, if you do do it, you need to get like a bolo tie or a vest. Because right now you just don't have, you have ponytail energy. You, you are, he's right about this. You are right about that. All right, so let's get into your article. Now, uh, that's, I just skimmed the surface. The stuff that you uncovered <laughs> and the connections to the big business and money people is, is kind of remarkable. So tell me, tell me what, what, what did I leave out that you think I should tell people? Well, you did a pretty good job, and it's a 9,000-word piece, so it's kind of hard to know where to start. But I can just tell you where I started was just from a, a visceral sense of indignation and disgust when I saw the coordinated campaign to take this film, which was executive produced by Michael Moore, who's a really... He's a famous filmmaker, uh, high name recognition, has you know good friendly relations with the Democratic Party leadership. But it was actually made by two filmmakers, Jeff Gibbs and Ozzy Zayner, who are what I would consider um, grassroots environmentalists who have dedicated their lives to understanding what it will take to save the planet and who have gone completely against the grain of the narrative that we're hearing from within the Democratic Party about climate change and a Green New Deal, and have produced a film that appeared for free on YouTube, Planet of the Humans, that really at its core was an anti-capitalist film that points to endless growth, endless neoliberal capitalist growth and consumption as the biggest problem, and showed the renewables industry to not be the solution, that we're not just going to be able to produce a bunch of electric batteries and solar panels and wind turbines to save us from climate change. And if you just look at climate change, you're only looking at part of the problem of the destruction of the earth. Um, for example, you know, all the electric batteries that are pr being produced to make the electric cars, which will be mandated for all California consumers in the next 10 years, those require humongous amounts of mining. And you mentioned the lithium coup in Bolivia. Well, lithium is one of the major minerals that will be required for electric car batteries to make Elon Musk's fortune. And his fortune is mostly government subsidized, even though he's a libertarian. So the mining industry is extremely excited about this transition to so-called renewables, and there's not even really any clear evidence that it will actually be possible to power this massive economy off of it. So they're, they're offering an entirely different solution, which I think is more subversive and radical than what these people who have linked their, um, hitched their wagons to the Democratic Party star are willing to offer, and that does include Josh Fox. And so I was indignant when Josh Fox and Bill McKibben, who is like the guru of the climate justice movement, or what I would call the climate cartel, when they started this campaign to censor the film, it really reminded me of the campaign to censor my book, The Management of Savagery. It was about a totally different subject. It was about regime change in Syria and the U.S. Uh, intelligence services working with extremist forces in the Middle East to advance geopolitical goals. But the same kind of echo chamber emerged where the forces that had been involved in Syria regime change actually came from my book, tried to prevent the book 
from even having an audience, prevent me from having a book tour, prevent my, they tried to pressure my publisher into not publishing it. So it, re, it reminded me of what was happening. And so I went down the rabbit hole on this investigation and what I found were that the people leading the campaign to censor the film had serious skin in the game when it came to this massive transition to renewables. Um, and you mentioned Josh Fox, for example. He was really the attack dog, the leader of this campaign. He had an open letter, a sign-on letter, calling on the film to be completely retracted, even though I couldn't really find major factual errors in it. He made it seem like this film was like, you know, a really poorly done Lenny Riefenstahl piece hyping up the Nazis when it was, you know, anything but. And the people who signed on to the letter, I noticed one person was named Tom Dinwoody, who will be completely unfamiliar to everyone watching this. And then I noticed Tom Dinwoody produced, was the executive producer of Josh Fox's sort of monologue play that he was going to do in January called The Truth Has Changed about um, fossil fuel industry disinformation and right-wing disinformation. And he was basically get, do a PR, he re-emerges and, and, you know, same trip. So this is, the problem is this unfettered consumption and capitalism is based on growth and consumption and more, more, more. And that's the message is like, hey, we're going to have to do some serious uh, curtailing of our consumption and our capitalism if we want to save the planet that, that will uh, support us, right? That's, I just want to make that point. Okay, so now go on. No, that's, it's important to bring it back to that point. I mean, there's a reason why we don't see people like Bill McKibben partnering with anti-war groups right. or partnering with anti-capitalist groups who are socialist in order to address the system of imperialism and capitalism. So there you go.